welcome to Dark Train Review. I'm doing something a little different on this second episode. Looking forward to a film that's coming out very soon. It is called The Thing, and I believe it comes out on October 14th. But I gotta say first that I'm going to review the John Carpenter version, not the original Howard Hawks version, although I have seen that one, but um, I'm a child of the 80s. first time I saw The Thing, I was a kid. I was probably way too young to be watching it. It was an interesting film. When I, I grew up watching it on video and I kept coming back to it. The Thing is about an alien terrestrial that comes a long time ago and crashes on Earth and basically gets frozen in the ice. An Arctic team discovers this and they take it back to their base. It thaws out, something happens, and there's this single dog running along the snow and there's a helicopter chasing it and you're like what is going on so the dog does arrive at the american camp and the gentlemen take down the uh, crazy person who has been trying to kill the dog and they let the dog into the camp and that's when all hell breaks loose because the dog is not what it seems and the entire cast is composed of men there's not one female in the cast there's no men you know, trying to get the attention of women in this film. They're all just a bunch of guys just there doing their research. This sets up an interesting dynamic. There's a monster on the loose and they can't find it. Anything that the creature touches, it can change into. And that's a really, really interesting concept. I think shape-shifting is a very, very spooky kind of thing because if somebody could assume someone else's form, really do it. That's pretty scary in my opinion. The film is based on a short story called Who Goes There? And um, I have read that short story. With the exception of the science fiction element, it's basically kind of an Agatha Christie kind of Ten Little Indians, you know, who's the killer? The Thing could actually be an interesting play, I mean, if you think about it, because it's not about the creature so much itself, it's just, who do you trust? Can you trust anybody? Is he my friend, or is he just a very perfect imitation? It's a very, very creepy concept, and it's so simple in its design that it's absolutely beautiful. You feel kind of cold when you watch the film. The camera moves through this laboratory environment. Very sterile, lots of stainless steel boxes. Dean Cundy did the DP work on that and it's, uh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful film for as grotesque as it is. <laughs> of course, my man, Rob Bottin. Rob Bottin, he destroyed the effects in that film. I think he actually, I remember in the commentary, he actually got sick because he worked so damn hard on that film. They actually had Stan Winston do uh, a few effects to help out because Rob was working so hard that he just never, he like never left the set. He was just sleeping there. <laughs> the effects in the film are fantastic. For the 1980s, they were cutting edge. Actually very gross. I remember watching the film one time with a girlfriend of mine and her mother was watching it with us. And let me just say, the dog kennel sequence, when that started happening, she left the room. It was enough to make her say, I can't deal with this, and she left. That's a good film in my opinion. Not that it makes people grossed out, but the fact that the film affected her in a way that she just couldn't deal with it. And a long time ago, I actually found this. It's a novelization of the film. Uh, by Alan Dean Foster, but it's based on the screenplay by Bill Lancaster. I completely forgot to mention that I had this really cool, I don't even know where I got it, but it's this really cool thing, uh, like action figure thing, but you've got, it's the dog kennel scene, and um, it's basically a uh, little diorama of the dog kennel scene. <laughs> I found this. It was way too expensive, but I bought it anyways at the time. And uh, it's really cool. As far as the old version of the thing goes, 1982 version, John Carpenter, um, I will definitely give that five stars because, well, that's kind of, <laughs> that kind of goes without saying. I like the film so much, I would naturally give it five stars. I haven't just seen this. I saw this when I was a child. I'm a man now, and I can talk about the film like an adult. But when I first saw it, I was a scared little kid, you know. And on that note, I would like to dedicate this particular review to one of my favorite directors, John Carpenter. 
I miss John Carpenter. <laughs> I feel like a lot of his films were ahead of their time. He was very, very, very bold in some of the choices that he made. When you listen to the commentaries on the Blu-rays with him and Kurt Russell, he's a guy that you could probably just sit down and just have a normal conversation with. This guy could be a truck driver or he could be, you know, he could work at a hospital. He seems like a normal guy. Just something about his films, I really, really came back to them. I enjoyed his films. I believe it's October 14th that the new film comes out. I'm looking forward to it. If you guys have any uh, comments or you'd like to subscribe to the Dark Train channel, I'm going to be doing those reviews as much as possible, hopefully every week. Let me know what you think about the old thing. Let me know what you think about what you're going to see in the new thing. Do you want to see it? Are you excited? Feel free to comment. Again, five-star review for the original version of the thing, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new one. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time for the next episode.